Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and I have done some more streamlining to the content process and I hope the audio is sounding a lot better today and uh, I would love to hear some feedback about it so let's start off with today's episode of tech news and we have no leaks from these Twitter leakers anymore but we have some good news and some more solid news about the GPUs and everything so let's start off first we have the GPU pr prices that continue to crash at least in the US market so we have the RX 6900 XT which is now selling for the 699 USD and 3080 Ti which is selling for 869 USD so this is quite good because these prices are about what minus 30 percent of the MSRP and this is pretty good if you were looking for a GPU I would still say hold on wait don't get it yet the GPU prices will fall even more in my opinion and you're more likely to get one if you really need one because you do some kind of ai graphic designing or video editing if you, in those cases you should get one now because it, it will affect your livelihood and stuff like that but if you do normal gaming and stuff if you can make do with your current gpu probably wait around a bit more let's see the uh, let's see the prices fall a bit more and next up then we have is intel arc a770 so this is the arc a770 which has been showcased in blender cycles with ray tracing and this blender is basically a very uh, infamous software for modeling uh, stuff for games and you know videos and movies and everything so they have actually used the ray tracing in the blender and it's the first time we're getting actually seeing intel utilize ray tracing on their gpus because we haven't seen it yet in any of the showcases demos or the tech tour that the arc uh, you know axg marketing group did with tom peterson and ryan shroud so this is the first time we are seeing and it was at siggraph 2022 so we have a intel tiger lake based system running the blender cycles with ray tracing and live denoising on a arc a770 and a NUC 11 extreme featuring intel 11th gen core okay kb series cpu okay and then the they have also announced the arc a15 a40 gpus for the professional uh, user base which is well well made for these kind of stuff but it's great to see at least one of the gaming gpus showcased over here because a lot of people buy nvidia gpu specifically for the professional workload they can actually use it for alongside their gaming task and everything and arc a770 comes with 32 xe cores and 16 gigabytes of gddr6 so this is the flagship model of the intel's arc gpu series however when it launches and when it comes to the market and everything remains to be seen at the moment because nothing is confirmed and then we have intel which is actually using the dx9 to dx12 emulation layer on xz and arc gpus so basically what uh, this actually is doing that emulation is quite slower than the native implementation of software so what they are running doing is actually using the d3d9 on 12 which is an open source conversion layer for dx9 api to do that and as with emulation it is slower it also produces sometimes graphical issues or bugs even though the dx d3 d9 on 12 is quite stable and a completed library we can't actually expect it to always work flawlessly and that's it and then we have intel core i7 12700k and core i5 12600k which are being offered as the alternative cpu prices to our scavenger hunter winters who actually can't wait for the gpus to arrive that to them yet so yep this is august 2022 the winners were uh, i mean this the scavenger herd began in march 2021 and the prices are still not delivered to the 300 winners and from the looks of it the arc a770 might be going for 410 400 usd which is basically what was expected for some time now and the arc a750 will be somewhat cheaper so this actually puts the rk750 at 290 usd which is almost along the lines that we have been uh, we have been hearing the rumors about for the pricing and the thing is that the scavenger hunt winners have to make a choice by august 19th the bad thing is that 13th generation comes in just around a, a month from now on september 27th or 29th something like that so the people will be getting a obsolete product quote unquote obsolete product when they choose to do it 
And then we have the GTX 2080, which is basically the only prototype GTX card known to support ray tracing. And this is actually a prototype, it seems to be from the early days before the RTX naming scheme was probably settled on for, but the card design is actually the same. And even the board number that was uh, actually, you know, seen on the sticker on the card was in fact the same as the RTX 2080. So this is only probably a chassis that is or cool, cooler that is of the GTX branding, but the card itself is entirely RTX 2080. And then we have NVIDIA, which has reportedly resumed the production of the RTX 3080 12GB after stopping it almost two months ago. And this is quite surprising because the next generation of GPUs are just, you know, around the corner. And this comes off as a bit surprising news, actually. And the 3080 12GB was one of the latest models released this year in the January. And the, it was a cosmetic upgrade over the 10GB version because it just let you play games on the ultra high quality settings with ultra high resolutions like 4k more easily instead of just running out of the vram buffer in those cases because i, I think i saw a test yesterday where the 3060 was actually outperforming 3070 in ray tracing because of the 16 gigabytes of vram whereas the 3070 only has 8 gigabytes so that's an interesting thing to consider actually and this seems that the company is also partially disabling gpus which may end up okay so the 3090 Ti has actually been disabled to uh, disabled to produce 3080 Ti's and 3080 10 or 12 gigabytes, according to Mega Size GPU, which has started making the 3080 12 gigabytes again. Okay, so this means it might be seeing a massive stock of the GA102 GPUs in the market soon. And then we have AMD, which has basically Navi 31 GPU, which is the 7900 XT probably with six with sorry 96 megabytes of infinity cache and navi 32 featuring up to 7680 cores and we have the names for this gpu as well which is plum bonito beat nas and hot pink bonefish for navi 31 32 and 33 respectively and all of this information comes from angstronomics and the specifications for the navi 3x has not changed since 2020 okay so let's dive into it. So the information that we have is that the Infinity Cache could be see the size of 192 megabytes or the 96 megabytes in one stack configuration. So basically, it's probably going to be 96 megabytes on the cache itself. And then on the chiplets, it's going to have the rest of it, something like that along the lines of that. And then you have Navi 32 with 7680 stream processors. This means instead of uh, 32 work, WGP workgroup processors. We know this GP only has 30 and the only offers a 7680 stream processors instead of 8192, which was claimed before. And there are no specifications in terms of memory changes, but Infinity Cache sizes up to 64 megabytes for unstacked and, three, and for 3D stacked variant is going to be 128. However, the latter might be abandoned due to cost. And then we have some interesting information about the die sizes because it seems the dies are actually smaller and this actually makes the Navi 31 GCD to 308 square millimeters and MCDs to be 37.5 square millimeters respectively. And this is smaller GCD size than previously reported 370 square millimeters. A full Navi 31 die with four MCDs would have around 533 square millimeters area. And then we have the new cooler design and up to two times eight pin connectors. The article over astronomics, you should check it out, has very quite surprising and interesting details on it. And one of the information was the cooler design. And the it seems that Navi 31 still has three fan design, but it's slightly taller than the RX 6000 series and has a new three strap accent close to the eight pin power connector. This claim would indirectly suggest that there is no PCIe Gen 5 16 power connectors on the RDNA 3 GPUs. So this means AMD seems to be staying with the existing power connectors because it is probably going to win in the power eff efficiency and also in the performance and production cost probably as well. If you look at the latest rumors and everything, and then we have AMD's Ryzen 
already on 7,000 RD in three code names, which is Plum Benito, Vietnam, and not Pink Bonfire, and Pink Sardine. So Pink Sardine seems to be the AMD 7000 series Phoenix APU name, and the Sardine is the following the yellow card, which is the Rembrandt and Green Sardine, which was Cezanne. And then we have the Pink Sardine, which carries the same PCI device ID as Raven Ridge, Renor, Van Gogh, and Yellow Card, which is 0x15E2. Instead of using different IDs for each APU, AMD is actually distinguishing them by PCIe revisions. So that's all this technical stuff. And then we have the code names appear in the future leaks, which should help in quick identification of the discrete or integrated GPUs. And yeah, that should actually help us identify and figure out what GPUs or which uh, isn't actually an a APU. However, there is no trace of any other RDNA 3 GPU such as the next generation console chips at the moment. So, Pink Sardine or Phoenix seems to be the first RDNA 3 APU that we are hearing about so far. And then we have AMD Apic 9654, which is a Genua CPU which might launch alongside Ryzen 7000 series and 96 core CPU. And then we have the AMD's news that AMD seems to be moving the Zen for CPU launch date to 27 September, delaying it by a bit from 15 September to just 12 days more later down the road. And on the same day as Intel's 13th generation Raptor Lake unveiling. So this would actually make it uh, quite difficult for Intel to actually sell, I believe, because AMD is just crushing and beating Intel and a lot of markets now even the cpu market the gpu market everything they're just succeeding in those and then we have the msi x670 motherboard which have been listed for at least 374 euros and 562 euros for the x670e carbon and it appears that these are the some of the first x670 motherboards that have appeared on the italian retailers and these Jeep, these motherboards should be coming out to, to the consumers quite soon. And this would actually put it around the 316 to 360 USD pricing for the X670P, which is the cheaper model. And then the expensive X670E should be around 475 to 540 USD without the VAT. And then the both motherboards are actually equipped with MI, oh, sorry, Wi Fi 6 and 2.5 giga. giga LAN networking also offering PCIe Gen 5 storage support and X670E will also support PCIe Gen 5 graphics card support and has more advanced power delivery of 18 plus 2 phase 90 MPS versus 14 plus 2 80 MPS on the Pro. So slightly better performance delivery and slightly better PCIe lane for the graphics card and that's the upgrade over it. And then we have G-Skill, which is preparing the Trident Z5 DDR5 6000 memory for the AMD Expo for the Ryzen 7000 series. And yeah, that's pretty much about this memory. And then we have the 7950X, 7900X, 7700X, and 7600X, which has been listed by a Canadian retailer. And then we have the pricing for these as the following. So we have the 7950X, which should be 892 USD, 7900X, which should be 608 USD. Then we have 7700X, which should be 480 USD. And then we have 7600X, which should be 330 USD. Also, the Lika Momomo US discovered these listing for the AMD uh, Ryzen CPUs, but there is no sign of the boxed version with the cooler so far. And it goes without saying that more that these pricing are likely not the final pricing because what we were hearing initially was that the 7600X will be priced the same as the 5600X according to WCCF tech. And then we have the Samsung 990 Pro M.2 PCIe Gen 5 times for SSD which has been confirmed by PCIe SIG. And then we have this is like the first Gen 5 compatible and compatible consumer SSDs because previously Samsung launched the PCIe Gen 5 SSDs which were for the enterprise and these 2.5 or 2 3 inch SSDs are offering up to 13,000 megabytes per second random reads and up to 25,000 K IOPS delivering up to 1.9 times faster speeds over Gen 4 products and also the Gen 5 storage can be utilized by some Intel Alder Lake systems and motherboards the entire lineup of AMD's Ryzen 7000 series motherboards will support Gen 5 
for storage however for, for gpus you'll have to get the 670e series or chipset to actually have it be supported and yeah guys that's pretty much it so leave a like on the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss out on my future videos and to stay up to date whenever i post one and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one